Hi, I'm Stephen Page, Associate Professor of Saxophone at the University of Texas at Austin Butler School of Music. In this video, I'll be outlining my basic break-in procedure for new reeds. This process helps new reeds become more stable and ready for regular playing, while also improving their longevity. My aim is to get as many playable reeds from the box as possible, and this process really helps in achieving that goal. The first thing I do with a new box is to mark each reed with a date. I typically have a lot of reeds going at one time, and once they're into a normal rotation and spread out in multiple reed cases, the date will help me keep track of each batch. I usually mark the back side of the reed where it won't rub off quite so easily. For the first play test, I'll put several in a glass of room temperature water to briefly soak and work my way through them. I don't like to let them soak too long, so I'll generally put just a few in at a time while I'm testing. One thing I've noticed when working through this process at home is that my cat really seems to want to get involved as well. He's even been known to steal a reed or two. As I play on each reed for the first time, I try to stick to a moderate dynamic and range, playing each reed for around 10 seconds. At this point, I'm just taking an initial impression of its potential and looking for reeds that really want to vibrate. This one seems to have a lot of possibilities. As I play through the remainder of the batch, I'll take note of any with particular promise, and if any seem particularly problematic, I may take them out of the group altogether. It's important that this first play test is short, as an extended play test can stunt a reed's potential. A gradual introduction to moisture and vibration over time will allow it to acclimate, as opposed to being traumatized by overplaying and overwetting initially. When I'm finished playing each reed, I'll put it on the table, flat side up, to let it dry out a little bit. Once I'm finished testing each reed, I'll start the final procedure of my daily process. After getting a little water on the reed, I'll use my forefinger and thumb to gently rub the vamp as well as the table. Over time, this will help close the pores of the reed, which I find help it become more stable. This is just a personal preference, and there are many players who do and do not do this. Finally, I'll mark the heel of each reed with a slash. For each day of the break-in, I'll add a new slash. Just as with marking the date, this will help me keep track of where I am in the process, especially if I'm not able to play through them all each day, which does happen from time to time. I repeat this process over a period of 7 to 10 days. With each day, I'll play the reed a little longer, and by the end, I'll test its capabilities more thoroughly by incorporating the full range and dynamic. Near the end of the full break-in procedure, I'll mark each reed to indicate its general characteristic. A dot in the center to indicate a reed that is playing well. An S in the center to indicate a reed that is too soft but also still has potential an H in the center for a reed that's too hard but still has potential, and an H on either side to designate an imbalance and indicate which side is harder. The other important factor in getting your reeds to play their very best is storage. There are many excellent ways to store reeds, and some really brilliant options are available to us. When selecting a way to store your reeds, the most important thing is to select something that will help regulate humidity. Remember, we want our reeds to be stable, and a consistent humidity level is a big part of that. Some simple options to consider might include a Tupperware container. These are airtight, reusable, easily accessible, and recyclable should it meet an early demise. One of many reed cases on the market, like this great one by Diderio. Airtight, space for eight reeds of any size, and very compact, perfect for a saxophone case. Or even something as simple as a Ziploc bag. To help regulate humidity, I recommend these two-way humidity packs. You can choose various humidity levels depending on what you prefer and the climate you live in. I currently use a 72% humidipack. I find this to be pretty good for where I live. When I was living in the Midwest and in Colorado, I used one that was a little bit higher since it was quite dry. I hope the ideas that I've shared with you today prove to be useful in your own read break-in process.
Thanks for watching, and check back for another video detailing some easy, effective reed working skills suitable for players of all levels.